Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna, or I'm gonna be showing you how to like use the wait for child part in a script and or why and how to use it. It's basically good for like waiting for something to be added. Like let's say you're trying to delete a part before it's actually added to workspace. It's best to wait for the child to be added into that place in most scenarios it's good to do that anyways so it doesn't throw out so many errors or anything like that so let's start off with an example an example could be let's say in screen gui i've got a button and i just want it to put a part into workspace now i'm not going to go too in depth on how to create a new part and put it into workspace but I'll give a little bit of a explanation. Um, so I'm just getting when the button's pressed and then I'm creating a new instance and parenting it to workspace. So pretty much if we load up the game, we might actually have to set its position to well, like wherever we want it to be. But we hit, yeah. Well, if we check workspace, you can see parts are being added. Just like that so what we're gonna do that I'm just gonna make part dot position equals vector 3 dot new and let's say it can be on the ground I don't really care let's make it 10 studs up make it zero all right so this is gonna be adding parts into the workspace and let's say we want a button to delete parts from the workspace so I'm going to duplicate this button and put this up here and I'm going to name this remove remove part. So in here instead I'm going to do game dot workspace wait for child. So this is a wait for child. You can pretty much wait for a child in like any section in the game like any folder any part any pretty much everything. So. I'm going to go I'm going to wait for child named part. So in the workspace I'm going to wait for a child named part to be in here. And then if there is or when there is a part in there I'm going to destroy it. So most people keep um their parameters to just part, but some people don't know that there's another parameter to a wait for child which is how long you want it to keep waiting for the child to be added until it just gives up pretty much. So let's say it's waiting for the child and after 10 seconds it gives up waiting for the child and it's no longer going to wait for it to get into workspace. That's how much you can put the delay here. If you want it to just infinitely wait until there is something in the workspace or wherever you're going to, you can just do math.huge. This pretty much just inputs a like giant number that is kind of like infinite. So for this, we can, we're not gonna put any parameter just to showcase an error that we could get. So let's hit play. So let's go ahead and load up. So I'm going to start off by adding parts. As you can see, every time I click this, a part spawns. I'm going to reload the game and I'm going to show you what happens if I don't have any parts. So if I just hit remove part, well, as you can see, nothing happens, right? Well, there's no part in workspace and yeah, but as you can see over here, we have an error in our output. It says infinite yield possible on workspace wait for child part. So the meaning of this error is that basically this just this part that we're looking for doesn't exist. It's nowhere to be found in the location we're trying to find it from. And so we have to figure out a way to like we'll make it there, which in our case is adding a part. As you can see, when I added the part, it removed it because we didn't add a timeout or a delay until it gives up. So if I hit remove part, it removes the part just like that. If I hit remove part and then I add a part, once it waits and notices that the child is finally added into the workspace, it's just going to remove it. So I can hit this a bunch of times and yeah. So remove part, add it in. 
So if you ever get this error, you just want to make sure you have something in workspace. And if you don't want this, or wherever you want it actually, and if you don't want this error to occur every time like you execute your scripts function from a button or anything, I'm just going to rename this to remove and this to add, just so I can see it. It's best to add a timeout. So if you don't want this to flood with errors and sometimes if this floods with errors the scripts actually not gonna run so let me see if I can give an example if I can cause that to happen so I'm gonna try printing destroyed and I'm gonna check the output and if you didn't know it while you're in game you can check output and stuff if you're like the owner of the game you can check stuff and run commands but if you're your like just a regular user you can see stuff that occur in output by pressing f9 to open the developer console it's useful for most things so if we hit remove part as you can see nothing's going on you can just wait and if we look at our script again as you can see it says print destroyed and if we look in our output i don't see anything that says destroyed that's because this is going to keep waiting for the child named p part to become like actually in the workspace and this can prevent a lot of problems for scripts like maybe the part never gets added because the previous part never gets destroyed when it's or like in time or something so it'll never like restart the game or whatever you're trying to do so if we add a part as you can see then it says destroyed because then this wait for child has finished but if we add a timeout, so let's say we add a timeout of, let's say, one second. After one second of waiting for the child, it's going to give up, and then it's just going to print destroyed, even though, well, it wasn't destroyed because it was never actually a part in workspace. So if we hit remove part, oh, we just got an error. Attempt to index nil with destroy. Wait, what was there to say? Attempt to index no with destroy. So game not workspace. Oh, that's because we never got anything to destroy. Well, in my scenario, you would have to add extra to make the timeout not provide any errors. But in most cases, if you're just looking for something, like if you're doing something like if if game dot workspace wait for child, then print destroyed. You can add a timeout. If you don't want it to keep erroring, let's try this without a timeout actually. Let's see if I hit remove part, is it just going to run an infinite yield and not give me the print that I asked for? As you can see, no print. And then let's try adding a delay of one second to our wait for child. And let's hit play or timeout. Let's hit remove part. And actually, a better example would be putting something after this statement. But as you can see, no error actually popped up in console because we gave up on waiting for the child. So that's pretty much how you can use and why you should use wait for child. It's good for making sure something exists before trying to apply effects to something. Like, you don't want to try and change a part to red if the part doesn't even exist in the first place you want to make sure it exists before you try to edit anything on it so i hope this video helped you and hopefully you enjoyed so yeah see ya